of the circus. For Jerry of the circus. Here she comes now. Hey, be quiet, Rags, or I'll put you in our wagon. Yeah, they made that in double quick time, didn't they, Jerry? Mm, I'll see. Do you think they can really get this place dry, Marie? Honest, it, it looks like a pond, doesn't it? Well, it won't for long. If this sun will stay out, we'll be able to get things set in time for the matinee. Okay, men, drag that hose over near the main pit. <laughs> Gee, I'd sure like to have some tall boots like those firemen are wearing. The land seems to slope in that way. If that's drained properly, it'll clear the entire lot. Uh, too bad your menagerie and main tent had to be set up on the lowest part of the grounds, Murray. Well, in bad weather, we'd have arranged the tents differently. But it's such a swell day, and that layout's the most convenient for the audience. Well, and I suppose you were hardly planning to flood the field. Well, it's the first time this ever happened, leastwise since I've been in the business. None of our roustabouts would have done a careless thing like that. I should say not. Okay, man. Man the pumps. Jiminy, I wouldn't have missed anything like this for anything. Lucky you've got a good drainage system here or your street would be flooded. I'll say. Hey, Jed. Yeah? Better move that hose more to the far side of the lot. Okay, Jed. The water's sure draining off fast. You bet it is. We've got an efficient fire department in this town. <laughs> Listen to him brag. Well, I have reason to. <laughs> sure, Murray's just jealous. That's all. He's just an onlooker this morning. Hey, you guys, just wait till the chief gets out of here, and if you want to really see some beautiful work, hey, you just watch my men get this lot in condition. Okay, chief, nothing more to do. That is, if you want to leave the mud here. Good work, boys. Turn her off. Chief, that's a mighty slick job. We owe you a lot for that. Well, I'm glad to know it's appreciated, Mr. Randall. To hear this Irishman of yours talking, you'd think the whole thing didn't amount to a roll pin. <laughs> Don't mind, Murray. He's got a swell head. You see, he knows our show couldn't get along without him. And You're doggone right it couldn't. <laughs> well, I can't hang around here. Me and my men got work to do. So long. Want some help, Murray? Sure, come along. I can always use an extra hand. <laughs> okay. Goodbye, Chief. Awful glad to have met you. Goodbye, son. I may see you later. I'm coming back to catch the show. You bet you are. It's my guest. Bring your family. Now, you go over and talk. Rags, come on, hurry up. <laughs> no need to worry about that now. We, we've got to go to the laundry anyhow. Just wait till Bump sees you. Well, Jerry, I guess we'll head for the main top. I've ordered truckloads of sawdust and shavings to be delivered, and I want to check on that. Yeah. I heard someone say they might have some trouble getting delivery on some of that stuff. Well, if they do, we'll be in a bad spot. You know, this is a clay lot, and the ground would never dry in time. Say, that's right. Well, I don't believe we could even have the Grand Parade, could we, in all that muck? I'm afraid not. Well, no use crossing bridges until we get to them. Hey, Mark. Yeah? Any of those shavings been delivered yet? No. Sam said to tell you they can't fill that order in time. What? Gee, that's fierce. Yeah, I gotta look into this. That order's gotta be delivered. Oh, say, Jerry, I forgot. Whitey's having a fit over at the horse top. A lot of extra cleaning up to do, and he's been calling for you. Honest, gee whiz, I, I'm sorry. I never thought about it. Better beat it, Jerry. I'm up to my neck myself with troubles. Go on, see you later. You bet. Thanks, Mark, for telling me. Come on, right <laughs> Say, I guess you and I are pretty much in disgrace. <laughs> I ought to have thought about Whitey, but, well, I was so keen about that pumping job, I, well, I guess I just didn't think. Well, we might as well go in and get it over with. Come on. <laughs> Whitey, 
Hey, Whitey. <laughs> Shrek, we better wait. Thing. No, it is ridiculous. Oh, but Boris, Boris, I've always done everything I could for your horses. No, you have not. Because they belong to me, and not to Mr. Randall. You think you can neglect them and... That's not true. After all, Boris, uh, all I'm supposed to do is see that they have the proper food supply and accommodation. You have your own men who groom them. Right. So now you try to lay the blame on my men, eh? There's no blame. I'm simply telling you that uh, your contract with Mr. Randall uh, says that all we're supposed to do is to furnish the proper food in each town for your horses. Yes, and... that is it. So... Do you think they get the proper food, eh? Of course. They get exactly what you've ordered for them in every town. It is not true. Today they did not get the proper rots. Huh. I shall go to Mr. Randall with this, and you shall be discharged. Now, listen, Boris. Be reasonable. After all, that fire plug that flooded us out this morning caused enough trouble. Of course, it would get the oats all wet, but after all, accidents will happen. Our horses will have to go without their oats today, too, but there's plenty of hay. And... Hey, hey, hey. Bah, who cares about hay? When my contract calls for oats, my horses must have oats. Oh, now, if you'll just keep calm, Boris, I'll see what can be done about it. After all, you know, you've got to be reasonable in an emergency. Emergency. And while we're on the subject, it seems to me that my horses haven't been bedded down properly lately. Your grooms have been given everything they've asked for. So, that's what you say. I hear a very different okay, story. Okay, okay. If you feel that way, go on and talk to Mr. Rand. After all, my horses represent an investment of thousands of dollars. For years, the Russians of slave that they might own the finest horse flesh in the world. Yes, yes, I know. You've got beautiful animals, Boris. And so you cannot blame me when I see them being neglected and my investment subject to, to possible destruction. Now, Boris, you know your horses are in no danger. Of... I am not so sure. And Stan, the head groom, says he thinks the boxcar should have heavier padding. After all, in transit, I can't afford to have the shins hurt. Or... I'm afraid, Boris, you'll just have to take all this up with Mr. Randall. Yes, you are right. That is just what I will do. I will no longer stand this ridiculous neglect and carelessness. Mm. Yes, yes, I will make my complaint to the... Oh, all right, all right. Goodbye, Boris. Goodbye. Oh, oh he hello there, Jerry. <laughs> well, I didn't see you. How long you been standing there? Quite a while. Mm -hmm. Say, Whitey, I I'm sure sorry I didn't get over here. Gee, I didn't realize you were in trouble. I say, I thought I was in enough hot water until that Boris came complaining around. He certainly can be a nuisance. But the way he talks to you, Whitey, that's awful. Oh, I ought to be used to it by now, I guess. <laughs> I tell you, when those hot-headed Russians let off steam, they certainly go to town. And after all you do for them and their horses, too. I know, but Boris has always ruled his own troop like a little czar, and sometimes I guess he forgets he doesn't own the whole circus. I thought Olga was a boss in that family. Well, she tries to be. The only one she'll take orders from is Boris. Hmm, some family. But aren't you afraid Boris will get you into trouble when he sees Mr. Randall? Well, I should say not. <laughs> Randall understands the situation. After all, I've worked for the boss for years. He knows I'm okay. He ought to. Uh, hey, here we are standing and talking with enough work on our hands to keep us busy till matinee time. Jerry, we've, we've got to get the mud off those horses and any of the trappings that got splattered during that flood. Okay, Waddy. I'll polish those horses of ours so, well, even you won't know them. Now that's the ticket, Jerry. Now step on it and we'll be through in time for lunch. Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? <laughs> I thought that'd be a good way to speed you up a bit. <laughs> the last one eaten? Well, I'll say, but how come you got here so late? I thought the flag was down by now. Shh, not so loud. I sneaked in and Joe promised to bring me a plate of grub. Oh, well, what happened? Well, I tell you, those horses got in an awful mess during that sprinkling we took this morning. <laughs> well, I hear you make a pretty good nursemaid to the horses. <laughs> sure, I like it. As a matter of fact, I, I like everything that happens around here. Accidents and all. Uh-huh. Except... What? The way Boris Rusoff talks to Whitey. Oh, so that's so and so shooting off his face again, hey? Don't you like him either? I do not. He acts as if he runs the place. And Vane? Uh, someday I'm going to take that peacock down to Peg. How? And I don't know, but I'll think of a way. Uh, here comes your food, Jerry. Oh, gee, say thanks, Joe. I'll do something for you sometime. Okay, Jerry. i got to get back to my dishes now. So long. Goodbye, and thanks a million. Yeah. Gee, I sure like to eat. You're telling me. You and Boris take the prize when it comes to putting away food. Yeah, someone said those Russians eat an awful lot. I'll say they do. They eat about half a loaf of bread between each course, just as a kind of uh, an appetizer. I should think they'd get fat. Well, not with all the exercise those horses give them. I tell you, I don't know whether they like to eat or show off the most. Can you reach that plate of bread, Slats? Sure. Here you are. Thanks. 
I got it. What, the bread? No, an idea. And what an idea. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. What is it? Well, um, how we can take our friend Boris down a bit and get some fun out of it at the same time. How? Well, you may be too young to have noticed how Boris loves to show off to the ladies, Jerry. I certainly am not too young. I guess I can see him scraping and bowing in front of the pretty women as much as you do. <laughs> okay, now this is the gag. We'll write him a fan letter. That'd only make him vainer. He gets plenty now. Sure, that's why he'll probably fall for the trick. We'll pretend to be some rich widow with a title. A duchess, huh? Sure, may as well be. Won't cost any (laughs) more. Then after we've told him how wonderful he is, we'll ask him out to dinner. Then he'll find out. (laughs) You just uh, hold on your horses. We'll make it a grand affair. Party. Costume ball. You mean get him all excited so get a costume and everything? Sure. Then we'll tell him to wait outside for a town car and a chauffeur to call for him. And, and nothing will happen, and the whole circus will get a good laugh. <laughs> well, what do you think of it? Well, I, I think it'd serve him right, if you think you'll fall for it. Well, that's up to us to make it sound real enough. Um, got a pencil? Sure. Okay. And uh, here's a piece of paper. We'll uh, have to work out a good letter. Gee, this is great. I, I tell you, if he falls for this, Slats, well, it'll it'll be just what he deserves after the way he talks to Whitey. <laughs> Yeah, let me see now. My dream writer. Say you're not going to start it off like that, are you? Sure. Then we'll say the Countess Rita Rimsikoff. You're going to make her Russian, too? Sure. That'll give her a better excuse to want to get acquainted. Countrymen in the foreign land, you know. Say, you're smart. Yeah, my mother always thought so. <laughs> now, let's see. Where do we go from here? I got it. A noble woman from your own country. Uh-huh, good. A noble woman from your own country... Wishes to thank you in person for the brilliant and skillful riding which takes her back to the years when she was at court and the Cossacks of her own country gave special performances for the Tsar. Tonight I am giving a grand costume ball at my estate. If you will honor me by coming in costume. Well, uh, how do we make him dress, Jerry? Gee, I don't know. Let's make him look silly. What about uh, dressing him up like a kid? It'd sure be a riot if he'd fall for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>